we're going to look at making easy water ripples in Blender without having to do any kind of crazy fluid simulation or anything like that. So I'm just going to start with the default cube here and make a sort of box or container for our pool. Um, so I'm just going to go into edit mode, uh, drag it up by 0.5, then scale it out. So S and Shift Z and then scale it to a reasonable size. And then grab this top face, I to inset and E to extrude all the way down, just above our bottom face there, so it doesn't go through like this, it just sits just above. Okay, now I'm going to grab this face in edit mode, shift D to duplicate it, escape, and then P part by selection. Now drag this up to the top here, and this is going to be our water surface that we're going to ripple. So I'm going to subdivide this plane a bunch. So if I right click and subdivide in edit mode, and then I can actually press Control Shift R to repeat the last action, subdivide it, give it a bunch of geometry. And the reason we need this is because we're going to drag an object through this, and the object is going to displace all these vertices um, to ripple. So the object that we're going to use to displace this is just an icosphere. Um, I've just scaled it down in edit mode there, so we keep the scale at 1. Uh, now I'm just going to keyframe this, sort of moving in and out of the pool to get some interesting ripples. Um, just keying its location. Something like that. Like that. So it just goes in and out. But I'm going to speed this middle part up a bunch. Something like that might look pretty cool. That's kind of janky. Yeah, I think let's just get it going a bit faster. That'll work. Cool. Now I'm going to set my frame range to about 60 frames, I think, for my animation. Uh, cool. Now, how do we get this to ripple? So we're going to use dynamic paint for this, which, if you don't know, it's essentially just uh, it allows you to have a brush object and a canvas object, and when they intersect or touch each other, the brush object will paint onto the canvas. In this case, uh, there's a handy operator that will allow us to paint waves um, at the click of a button, basically. So I've just gone into the Physics tab here with this water selected, uh, added a dynamic paint object to it, make sure it's set to canvas, and then add canvas. We'll leave this at vertex. You can actually bake it to an image sequence if you want to bake it to another piece of software and read it in or something like that. Um, you can see our frame start and end are all set here. Uh, and instead of paint, we want to set this to waves. Sweet. Now there's a bunch of settings here which will help you control the look of your waves um, or your ripples uh, if you want to tweak that. Now nothing happens still. That's because we haven't defined the brush object for our dynamic paint yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this icosphere, select dynamic paint, set this to brush, add brush. Sweet, we don't actually have to do anything else with that now. And if we play, we should see some nice ripples. They also co collide with the borders here, and that's because uh, we haven't ticked open borders. If I were to tick that, you'd see that the ripples sort of act like the border doesn't exist, or at least they should. Um, but for our case anyway, I want to keep it looking like they bounce off the sides. Sweet, they're looking a bit low poly right now, so I'm going to go into edit mode and give it one more subdivision. And then, that's looking sweet, I'm going to shade smooth and give it, hit control 1 to give it a subdivision surface value of 1. Also set that to 1 for the render, because it's already very high poly. Awesome. So now all that's really left to do is to look at how to render this and render settings for water. I'm going to give, I'm going to click this two here to make sure that this has its own material, and I'm going to bump up the transmission to one, <coughs> the roughness down, and I'm going to switch from EV to to render some really nice water with some caustics and all sorts of ray tracing effects. Sweet. So now this is our water. You can see it's very noisy. That's because um, we're lighting it with a point light, and we also have caustics enabled um, down here. So what we want to do is use better caustics in this. So 
I'm going to grab this object, go to shading, enable receive shadow caustics, and then on the water object, cast shadow caustics, and then also on our light, we have to enable shadow caustics. Sweet, these caustics are much better and it's much less noisy. I'm going to set this to sun so we get a directional light. It's way too bright, so I'll set this to 10, and then I'll decrease the angle a bunch because it, the light's a bit too soft now to really see any caustics. And sweet, we can see some beautiful caustics at the bottom of our pool, right underneath where all the ripples are. Mm. That looks sweet. And also tint your pool blue if you want to. Now our lighting's looking pretty grey and pretty nasty at the minute, so I'm going to go ahead and add a HDR to the scene. Okay, I've loaded in a HDR, now I'm going to go into Film, set this to Transparent, and serve with the glass. <coughs> I don't want to see it. Now, let's drop in a plane for our floor. Make sure it's below our cube so that it doesn't go through the pool. Scale it up real big, go into the camera view. I'll grab our camera here and move it around. I'm going to select Render Region just to speed things up a bit. Give it a square aspect ratio, something like that. Maybe play with the light a little bit, give this material a nice floor, floor color. Something pastel, I think, will look quite nice. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much ready to render now. So all we have to do now is give it a reasonable amount of samples. I think 256 should be okay. Um, we can enable denoising in the viewport to maybe see it a little bit better. Sweet. And now that we're ready to render this, we can go back to our dynamic paint on the water object here. Go ahead and bake it. So we're going to look for the cache menu here. Can see at 60 frames on disk. I'm just going to hit bake. It's going to run through that again. And now this is stuck. So this will no longer be able, we won't be able to change this animation anymore unless we click delete bake, change it, and render it again. And of course, there are various settings here to change the way these ripples look. So I'll just quickly delete the bake and go over those. So speed is pretty self explanatory, um, it's how fast the, the waves move. Uh, this two is way too fast, I think it looked good on one. And then there's dampening, which basically is like an artificial slowdown for the waves. So if I set this a little bit higher, you can see they dissipate much more quickly. And it almost gives the appearance of a more viscous fluid. If I set this to zero or lower, they'll keep going for longer. Um, but it's quite a subtle effect. Uh, spring, I don't really know what this does. Um, I guess this, this is sort of like dampening in a way, it just sort of helps bring the water back down. Um, smoothness as well, I think is, you can read the drop downs here, it, I think it just makes the waves less choppy. You can see we've turned it down and there's a bit more detail going on in there now. Um, but I think, yeah, you can see that's really choppy now. I think where it was was pretty good. So I'm just going to leave this at default settings. Hit bake. And boom. Now make sure you just select your render output. Render um, a good amount of samples. And you're done. 